Okay, um, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to the Excel for EID webinar series. Um, I'm Charlotte Thompson. I'm a senior biosecurity officer for the Sheep and Goat EID project at the local land services in the Central West. Um, just a reminder, this webinar is being recorded and I'll be distributing the uh, recording to all those registered as soon as possible after this webinar. Um, and also feel free to ask questions during the webinar. Um, the microphones are disabled, so pop up um, all your questions into the chat. Um, I'd just like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land and waters, and we, re we pay respect to elders past and pre present. We're committed to providing places in which Aboriginal people are included socially, culturally and economically through collaborative approaches to our work. Just a bit about Sally. So Sally Martin's career in the sheep and wool industry spans more than 30 years. After leaving the New South Wales Department of Primary Industries more than a decade ago, she started a sheep, and gen a sheep genetic and consulting business, which we now know as Sheep Metrics. Welcome, Sally. All over to you now. Uh, thank you very much, Charlotte. I really appreciate uh, the opportunity to talk to everyone again about um, EID. So I'm just going to share my screen so that, um, yeah, so this is the second uh, webinar that we're running in a series of three. And um, so the previous uh, webinar, we talked talked about storing your data, understanding Excel functionality. We had a little bit of look at that in terms of what a bucket file looked like, setting up for your traits to be able to upload to maybe a stick read or an indicator or even software. Uh, and we looked at some of the uh, downloading data and files and Excel spreadsheets, some formats that we looked at um, as well. And so today we're kind of adding on. So we're, we're building on um, each time with um, the webinars. So today we're going to look at actually using your data. So effectively in terms of how that might um, look in terms of answering your questions. And one of the first things before we actually get into um, looking at any Excel spreadsheet is actually having an idea of what type of question you want to answer. And that will also then help you understand the ways that you might set up your data and, and in terms of the format and, and then how you can get out of it. And I'll show you some, some examples of that as well. You might be capturing information on multiple um, at, at different times and on different devices, or you might, for example, take some samples and send them off to get um, a micron test, and that will then be sent back to you in an Excel spreadsheet. So it won't, so, or you might have a pregnancy scanner who might come in and actually give you the information on a USB stick or email it to you. So it may not be captured on any of your devices. So what we're going to go through is actually being able to pull together multiple pieces of information. So then you can actually start to analyse that to then be able to um, put that into um, another format that might be like a draft list or something like that. Being able to format your data to get the most out of it, and I think there's is some really good ways to be able to, and you've got to, again, keep thinking about how I want this information recorded and how um, or in what question am I trying to answer. And I've got some examples of then how we're going to use some of that information and, and so you can actually start drawing conclusions and making some decisions. And again, one of those might be that draft or cull list. So I don't want to um, um, have too much on PowerPoint, but I, I just thought, so the questions. Um, an example that we've got here is this, um, and hopefully you can see my mouse, this is an example of two lots of pregnancy scans that we've brought together in a very simple pivot table, and I'll show you how to build one of these. And in this, we've got pregnancy scans on use that were captured in in 2018 and 2017 in this particular example. And with this pivot table, we can see very quickly how um, many sing how many ewes had singles or were pregnancy scanned with singles in both years 
and how many ewes were pregnancy scanned with twins in both years, as an example. You might also have some fleece information. So this chart, um, graph shows us very quickly the spread of um, fleece weights to mi uh, micron tests. And we can see very quickly, we've got some ewes here that are cutting six kilos and we've got some that are um, seven below 17 microns and others that are um, above 22. So instantly from a very quick picture graph, we can actually start to have a look at that information and start to make um, uh, not necessarily some decisions, but to get a, a, a feel for what type of spread there is and if there's certain ones that are above a certain micron, maybe they're the ones that we start actually looking, do we cull those? Or do we start thinking about putting them to a different RAM? If, for example, reducing micron is actually part of our breeding objective. Another one might be where we actually have um, some pregnancy scan information and some body weight. So this graph is actually showing what the pregnancy scanning, so dries are blue, singles are orange, and the twins, um, the ewes that are scanned with twins are in the grey. And these are actually ewe lambs. And so there was a cutoff in terms of which ewe lambs were able to go to the ram. But we can see that there's more dries at these lighter weights. Um, and then we start tipping over and we start getting more singles. Um, and also our twins start to, to in increase as well. So this starts to inform maybe what your cutoff weights might be in terms of joining um, for next year, as an example. So having an idea of what question you want to have answered will then also help you determine in terms of how you might set your data up. So let's we'll have a look at that now. In, so let's go to um, a spreadsheet. So I've got some pregnancy scans here. And you might remember that we actually talked about last time about doing, um, so we had some information that we wanted to share or start to sort. And in our data, and we go to filters. And this has now highlighted all of my columns in here. And this is actually some of that, um, the pregnancy scanning results that we that I showed in that graph. So some of these use were uh, joined in 23, 2023, and they've been joined again in 2024. What we can start doing, so this is actually, I think, just sorted on um, the electronic tag, so that doesn't really tell us really much, but we can actually start sort, we can sort very, um, so all I did was, um, so I've left click on the mouse and we can sort in terms of smallest or we can go largest to smallest. So now we're finding all of our twins. Hey, Sally, just sorry to interrupt one second. Would you mind zooming in slightly? Sorry, I, it's, is that better? That's better, that's perfect, thank you. Okay, sorry about that. Um, thanks, Charlotte. Uh, so we can, yeah, so you can start to sort um, that information. The other thing um, to, to look at here is we've actually captured this wet and dry as well, whether, so the, this you, she was pregnant with twins, and she was wet. We don't know whether she reared both lambs, but we know she definitely reared one lamb. And then she's got pregnant again in 20, um, again this year. And we've now added um, in here as well the um, 24 preg stage. So she, whether they were early or late in this particular example. Anything that's come up with a, uh, that's been dry, doesn't have a stage because it's dry. The other thing that we've added in um, is that we can actually sort on, so some of these ewes were joined in the first year, but then they've been culled for various other reasons. We can actually start to get rid of that information or um, you can keep it in, in, in your spreadsheet. 
So where we can start having a look at, so I've pulled this information together and I'm going to show you a formula in a minute that will, um, where we can start collating, collating that data from multiple points, which this is an example of being able to pull that information together. But what I'm just quickly going to show you now is um, how to actually do one of these pivot tables. So if we put our, um, we highlight the, the, the top um, cell, A1, and we can go up into insert and we want to do a pivot table. So we click on this, um, the pivot table, and we want to do it from a table or range, um, which is in front of here. So then we'll go, it's, so this is actually highlighted automatically for me, that whole table, that um, all spreadsheet, and we've got a um, 1,461 data points. Um, but what I just want to scroll down just to make sure it hasn't missed anything. And then all you have to do is hit OK. So now we have a spreadsheet, um, a summary sheet that we can now start um, doing some work with. I often um, will double click down here and actually call this my summary. It's my summary page. So I know if I open this up again, I, I will go be able to go straight there. So if I click in the pivot table, what it's actually doing, and it's a little bit hard. Um, if you can't see this, I apologize. I can't make that bigger, but what I've got here is I've got the headings that are, um, so the headings that are in this spreadsheet. Um, so EID, 23 preg, the wet and dry, and then this year's results, the 24 pregnancy scan and stage. They are all sitting over here in this side of the um, spreadsheet. So I can actually start, similar to that other table that I showed in that um, PowerPoint, I, we can actually start seeing which ewes were pregnant in 2023 and 24. So all you do is you, you, dra you drag um, it down. So I'm going to put the 23 drop in this column here. So this is putting a summary of that. Um, that data that, that's been captured in the 23 drop. And then for the 24 drop, I'm actually going to put it across the top of the table. So it's actually going to set up the columns. And all we need to do in this particular case is actually count how many ewes, I'm just interested in um, how many ewes were pregnant with singles and twins in both years. So I'm just going to drag now that EID and I'm going to put it in the value. And it's actually you can change um, whether they're um, whether you count it or you can average and um, we'll do some other pivot tables in a minute where we'll actually have a look at this. So with, with um, a very quick um, pivot table, I can now see that. So this is this is the the twenty four um, information two thousand twenty four pregnancy scan information across the top. And we've got the 23 pregnancy scan information down um, the, the left-hand side. So we have very quickly from that um, piece of data, from this big spreadsheet, we've got a summary um, that we can now start to interpret. So we have 100 U's that were dry in both years. We've got 250 ewes that had singles, both as a ewe lamb and, and um, as, as now as an 18-month-old. And we've got 96 that had tw um, twins in both years. We've got the ewes that we've culled and, and, that is, uh, and also we have some ewes here that actually didn't get joined in the first year. Uh, they probably didn't meet the, the weight thresholds. So that just gives you a really quick picture in terms of how you can actually start to take some information and make, make sense of it in terms of giving you some answers in terms of the predictability. Um, Hey, Sally, just got a question from Chris. He's just asking um, if numbers on an iPad will be usable as a program to sort results. 
Ah, oh, that's a good question that I possibly don't have a good answer to. Uh, but um, if we could take that on notice and find out about it, um, that would be, yeah, if that's okay. Unfortunately, I'm a bit of an Android girl and don't um, do a lot with iPads. So I'll ha have to um, follow that up if that's okay. Sounds good. So, yeah, so now we've got a, a, the example of, of how you might bring um, that two lots of pregnancy scan information. So I can actually copy that too. So I can copy that whole table and because um, it might be you might want to change a few things in it. So if I actually click over here and I right click, I want to, oh, sorry, <sighs> my mouse is, oh, there we go. Um, I want to. Um, just put the values because I don't want the um, all of the the formulas that actually go with it. So then I can start tidying this up so that I can make sense of it um, without having to go back and, and look at all of the different um, information that I've had in the pivot table. So this um, you you might change the headings to to, to dry um, single and twin and. And our top, uh, up the top here, um, we, that that will be. I um, we can quickly merge that, and we that that'll be the two thousand and twenty four preg scans. Um, so it it just it and this will be the two o two three preg scans down this side. So all I'm just doing is just tidying it up a little bit, just so that. Um, it's easy maybe to to remember uh, and then you can start having a look at um, look at it um, at later on and these weren't uh, this so these were not joined. So that's just a very quick example. I do find so that right click on here if you do do copy something, let's go so control C, I've copied and if I right click somewhere, it's this pasting just the values, not the formula. It's actually a really useful um, tool to use, particularly if you have multiple formulas. And if you start sorting information in a different spreadsheet and the formula will go looking for it, you can actually corrupt your data as well. So sometimes that um, just pasting as values can be quite quite handy to know that you um, if you go do to do sort, um, for example, if you if you start sorting in here, is it going to have an effect in terms of other parts of um, what you might be looking at? So what we've um, so we've talked a little bit about pivot tables, and we'll ha we'll do a graph in a little while, um, and so let's go now and have a look at collating your data from multiple locations, which I had done before with that pregnancy scan, but I'm going to show you in more detail now. Last time we talked about saving your data in folders and naming and being really explicit in terms of the name that you put on it and the date so that you can go back and find it. And we talked about saving your data in the year that the animals were born, um, so the drop year is something that I find really useful. One of the questions that you'll need to think about is are you going to bring data into an existing um, spreadsheet that you've already got or are you going to start a new one and start from fre um, start fresh to, to bring um, data in? So they're, they're probably two questions um, that you need to answer for um, answer up front. And then the next is, um, that, so as in this particular name on this one, I've actually called that the 24 preg scans and they're collated. So what that might mean to you or what it means for me is that I might have collated a number of different mobs into one spreadsheet. So I've started to bring that together. So being quite explicit with my naming. And we also talked about this last time, but make sure that you've saved 
um, the, for, the the spreadsheet that you're you're pulling together in an Excel form um, in an Excel worksheet format rather than a um, a CSV format, which we did discuss last time. So this is the formula that we're going to have a look at, and I'm I'll, I'll what I'll do is I'll work through it, and then we'll come back to this. So one example might be. We've just, um, let's just say that you've got some fleece information that you have captured, you've sent your samples away, and this is an example of what the, your data might look like when you, when you get it back from, um, say, yeah, the, the, one of the testing houses. One of the rules that we made last time was always make a copy and work on that copy. So let's do that. So let's right click, move, and we want to create a copy. So we're not going to work on the original. So this is our original. And now we can name this. So I've double clicked on that. So this will be um, 2023 drop U fleece collated, something like that. Just so you know that it's definitely something that you've worked on. I do sometimes um, if you want, uh, so if I right click on this, I can actually change the color of the tab as well. So my color coding is red is don't go, don't touch. <laughs> and then we can say that this is green and um, this is the one that we're working on. So if anyone else opens it, they know not to start playing around with this spreadsheet. So in this particular case, let's uh, um, we've got um, our, this is called our ear tag, um, and we might need to start changing a few things. So we don't need to cap to keep that top line, and then we can say, well, this is now EID because we talked about last time about having your headings similar. If, for example, you want to upload information into one of you, either your indicator or your stick reader. Um, so we want to bring in the fleece weight, and it's pr probably easier to bring the one piece of data into this spreadsheet rather than to take all of this and put it into fleece weight data. So the question that I asked before was, you know, think about are you bringing something into an existing spreadsheet or are you starting from scratch? I would be bringing in the fleece um, weights into this um, spreadsheet. So we've got... We've got our micron tests um, and I will show you, this is um, an example of, of, of uh, where the fleece, white, um, the fleece weights uh, may have been downloaded from um, another, another source, another, so in this case, the, um, an indicator. And so you've got the date here this um, th that you can see that these were collected. Another thing that might be of interest, and you might notice I've got a gap here, um, and what we need to do is when you're thinking about pulling information in together, what can happen is if you've got duplicates, it what it'll do is it'll look up the um, information in the first one it finds. So in let's just say that this might have been, I'll just um, pop that there. Let's just say the um, the first, because these two are the same and I'll show you how to identify those. If, for example, we've looked up this um, electronic tag to pull that information in, what it'll do is it'll pick up what's in here, which is nothing. So and it'll miss the actual data that we want. So the first thing we, we want to do is actually identify where we've got duplicates. And so I'm highlighting just with my left side of my mouse, that column that with all of the electronic tags, and I'm going to go up in here to conditional formatting. And I'm going to highlight cells and there's a rule. And if I go down here, to duplicate values, it'll come up and say any duplicates will be light red filled um, with dark red text. And I'll go, okay. And automatically it's found those two um, 
um, t tags. And because the electronic tags is such a long number, we want to make sure that we don't have, um, you know, we, we're not, um, I guess, having to go and look for individual tags. So we want to just make sure that the data set that we're going to pull in is, is tidy. So we can delete that and that will get rid of that duplicate and um, and we can look through further down to see if there's any others. And I have I have looked at this one before, so there, there weren't, but I just thought that that was a really quick way. So that's highlighting that, that cell, going up to conditional format. We're highlighting that rule and we're going down to duplicate values. So let's go now. So let, we, and we, we've saved that so we can save that um, now we're going to go back to our wool samples and we're going to do the um, the formula that we talked about before so we use um, VLOOKUP and there's another one called XLOOKUP that you can use but we're only going to show you VLOOKUP today so we start with our formula which we put an equal sign and we're going to type in you can um, v look up, and we want to go and look up this electronic tag, and the formula is then a comma, and we want to look it up in the um, fleece weight file. So we go to the fleece weight file. You may not be able to see this, but that the formula is still sitting up in here. And we want to highlight the um, spreadsheet or the, the data set that we want to look up. So I'm just, I've just held my mouse down um, with the left and I've highlighted um, those two um, or three columns. And I'm going to go control, shift and arrow down. And what that's actually done is taken me to where we've got a gap. So I need to keep going down. We must have had a, a, a U that um, lost an electronic tag uh, and so her visual tag's been written in. So we're going to keep going down. I'm, so I'm control, shift, arrow down. Got a few more gaps. Um, it's always good when you don't have your, all your data tidy so we can show you all these. Um, so that's just a... Um, a I uh, either they've missed scanning the electronic tag or the weight's been recorded before the electronic tag was um, was um, recorded or scanned. So so our formula is now equals V lookup and we're looking up the electronic tag in the fiber diameter result spreadsheet and we're looking that up in our greasy fleece weight spreadsheet and that's what all of this, um, is indicating and then we're going to put a comma and we want to look up <clears throat> so the column <clears throat> excuse me the column that we actually want to look up is the number from the um, electronic or the visual whatever identification we're, um, we're wanting to look up so it is the third so it's one two three it's the third column from the identification we're looking up. So we put three and then we want to make sure that it looks up um, the exact match. So we write false, close the arrow, uh, sorry, close the brackets and then hit enter. And so it's gone and looked up this electronic tag in the um, fleece weight file. And so now we can actually double click on that um, and it will go and find all the rest of our police lights for us. So if I go back briefly, so this was the formula. So it's the lookup and we're looking up the identification of the animal that we want and we and then we with a comma and then we go to um, we go to the spreadsheet that we want to find that information in and in particular in this example I've got the 2010 preg and you'll notice that there's dollars oops sorry there's dollar signs 
here and what that's asking us uh, what that's telling the formula to do is that we want that um, it's an absolute reference so a sp specific location that it's going to look up and if if we drag the formula down it'll it'll maintain that um, that that piece of um, uh, data that we that we want to um, or, or with that spreadsheet I should say where that data is sitting and then we've got um, it it's in the column so the reference in terms of how far away you know how many columns was it away you know it could be the fifth column that it might have been in um, and we want it to look up that fifth column in the data set and bring that information into to where we're looking and then it's equals false because we want it we need it to be an exact match if we had true it would look up it could look up an approximate match So if I go back now, so going back now to where uh, we've pulled that information into our, our spreadsheet and that's still got the formula here. Now we've got an NA. The other thing that is worthwhile doing um, in case something happens and we go, right, well, we just want to, um, so I'm going to copy this now. So control C is copy. And I'm right clicking on my mouse and I'm going to paste the values. So now that's actually taken away the formula. Um, and so if, you, if, if you're if ever worried about a formula and someone um, so, you know, sorting some other data and, and uh, um, so for example, actually, if I undo is also your friend, don't forget. If I undo that, um, the formula should be back there. What I'm going to do is quickly show you how we can corrupt our formulas. So if we go back into our, let's say we, we're back in our um, our fleece weight file. If I right click and um, hang on, I'll just escape. Uh, if I right click and I insert another column, and let's just say I'm going to um. I don't know, let's just say we just put sex. So these are all U's. Um, for example, we'd, we want to keep, we, we want to know that. Um, so we've got it now an extra column. So the fleece weight information now is one, two, three, four columns away. If we go back to our... Um, and we forget that we've got this other formula that we've been doing because we got distracted because the phone rang. So now it's actually still looking up our third column. But if you recall, um, we don't have actually any information in this third column. So that's why often making sure that you um, save your data um, or copy and paste it as values can eliminate any of these problems um, coming up later on. Now we could easily fix this if we um, by by changing that um, formula now to a four. I make that a bit bigger. Sorry. Um, if I make that bigger. Um, so I've, um, it's a little bit hard to see, but the, the column, um, there you go, the column, I can change that um, quite easily without having to do the whole formula again. So that was back to where it was. And then if I right click on, on the, if I click on the formula, I can, um, I can then change that so that we can update that again. And then double click and that'll copy that all down. So let's um, so left click, control C, let's copy it, right click on the mouse and let's paste it as values. So if we do anything on that other one, it, that will be fine. So now that we've got that information, oh sorry, uh, Charlotte, any questions? None so far, but um yeah, everybody feel free to put um, questions into the chat and um, I can ask them directly to Sally. Thank you. Okay, so now what we can have a look at, so we've we've got the, our greasy fleece weight, we've got our yield, um, 
So another formula you might want to do is actually work out, well, what's our clean fleece weight? So these, um, so it might, so equals, and we want to, um, we want to take our fleece weight and we're going to times it, so um, our, times it by our yield um, to give us, um, and then we're going to divide that by 100 and that will give us our clean fleece weight. So then now, so we've got our greasy fleece weight and our clean fleece weight, and you can copy that formula down as well. The other, the other thing that is worthwhile, so let's go back to our data and our filter, is that you'll notice we've got this NA popping up here. So we can actually sort and see how many animals and we're making sure that before we start sorting um, all of our, our headings, are, um, we don't have any gaps. So no, we don't. So it's right to go, it's right for us to sort. So if we sort on largest to smallest, it'll actually identify any animals here that we don't have a um, particular fleece weight for. Hey, so, Sally, sorry to interrupt. Yep. Just got a couple of questions for you in the chat. Um, Paul's just wanting to know how you're collating the EID so that they match. Okay, so it was that formula. So it's this formula. So we're not, um, so I'm actually not, uh, I'm looking up the electronic tag with this v, v lookup. Yeah, is that, it's possibly not answering um do you want to ask the question one more time? Uh, yeah. So Paul's just asking um, how you collate the EIDs um, so that they match. Um, mm. So, yeah. So um, I'm actually not, I, I'm pulling data in to this. Um, so we've pulled the greasy fleece weight data into the micron tests. Uh, I'm not actually trying to go, so you could, um, if you went control C, you could actually go um, with the find, um, we could highlight this and go find um, and you could actually, so control V's paste and we could actually find that U um, if you were wanting to do um, find an individual animal, but I'm not actually copying and bringing in to that other spreadsheet um, this particular file. I'm actually um, looking it up and and bringing it in. So I may not have answered your your question, Paul, but um, hopefully that that has helped a little bit. Uh, so let's just quickly go back to, so in this particular case, I'd probably just delete those because NA is not going to be helpful. And unfortunately, we've either then got to go and identify the, the visual tags or um, there may be another way that we can actually find, um, find those animals. Um, so that gives us a little bit of a, an idea in terms of how you how you might bring different data sets together, and then and then you could work out your greasy fleece weight percentage for those use, um, and and the clean fleece weight, which we might well do now. So to work out a percentage in terms of where I find it's probably easier to look at looking at a percentage rather than just the absolute. Um, value, a, a quick deviation in terms of the micron. So we can quickly see by looking at this is the fibre diameter deviation is that this animal is 2.32 um, microns below the average. So I find percentages and deviations a really quick way to be able to have a look at a spreadsheet and in any information and give us an indication of where animals might sit are they above or below the average hey Sal, i've got another question for you from pamela um could you use merged when you're adding um greasy fleet weights to the fleece sample data um can you merge those 
Uh, you possibly could. I like the lookup uh, purely because it looks up the exact information and if it doesn't get a match, I can then, uh, like those NAs that we had there before, I can automatically see that if I've got gaps in the data. Um, so my preference is I like to, to use um, this VLOOKUP and rather than cutting and pasting. Um, so it tells me a little bit more about the two data sets that I'm pulling together and if we've got any problems. Um, yeah, so hopefully that, um, that helps. But let's just quickly have a quick look at working out a percentage. Oh, sorry, Charlotte, was there another question? Sorry. Um, just referring back to Paul's question before about collating the EID so that they match, he just wanted to know um, the formula that you used, um, does it auto match the EID? Um, it will if it is in both spreadsheets. Otherwise, it will come up with that NA uh, in that it can't match it. So, yes, it will. So in terms of that's quickly if, uh, doing a, 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 a percentage, so we want to look up, um, uh, so there's a, there's a couple of ways that you can do this, but we, we want um, this, is this this fleece weight above or below? So we want to, so we want to look it up and we want to divide it by the average um, of all of the sheep that are in this. Um, so I've just... I'm, I'm putting a formula within a formula. Um, you could actually work out the average and just divide it by that. Um, but um, I'll, I'll show you. I'll show you the two ways that you can do it. So I want to. Um, I want that one, and I'm going to go Control Shift, and I'm arrowing down, and that should go to the bottom of my my tape my um, my column there. So I've got all those, and I'm going to close. Hang on, I'll go, sorry, just, just close your eyes for a second. We'll go to the top here and we'll, um, so I've, that that's part of the formula and uh, it's there's two um, parentheses that we put around and, and the other one is we want to times that by 100. So then we've got it as a percentage. So this one is 51% or if I didn't have that um, 100 there, I could just um, I could just click on the percentage. The reason that I put the hundred there is, and and why just doing the percentage um, sometimes doesn't work is that a lot of your hardware, so your stick reader or your indicator, won't like you uploading a percentage sign. So actually having a whole number there is. Um, is better. So if I undo that and I put in um, times 100, that'll give me um, the actual number and the software. Pro uh, so most of the software programs and the indicators and stick readers will prefer that than um, if it was with the little um, percentage sign behind it. So just be aware of that. Uh, so now the other thing which we talked about before um, is I need to make sure that I've actually got um, my dollar signs in here so that it doesn't drag my my sheet down. So that's going to be important. So if I can um, highlight that, if I make that column, oops, sorry, undo if I make that column bigger, people might be able to, I know it's a bit hard to see my screen, um, they might be able to see the formula, not really. We'll put that in the notes. Um, so the other way you can do it is you could actually put um, a row, insert a row above and you can just go equals um, average and you can actually highlight. So control shift arrow down right to the bottom of that um, that column and hit enter. And so 2.14, so these are, um, uh, were shown um, with six months wool and you can drag that across to see what your averages are really quite quickly. So you could, for example, if you wanted to do for the, for the clean fleece weight, you could go um, equals um, the clean fleece weight divided by 
the average and, and just do something simple like that as well. Um, and again, we'll put the um, uh, brackets around it and we'll times that by 100. And this is, we'll just get rid of the extra zeros that we don't need and tidy that up. Um, again, we need to make sure that we're dividing by the same number all the time. So if I didn't actually have that, um, those dollar signs in there to say that that's the, that's the specific location that I want it to look up all the time, if I, um, sorry, if I drag that down, what it's actually doing is it's actually dragging the formula down as it goes, as I go down. Whereas if I put the dollar signs there, um, it will make sure that that specific location in terms of um, that red cell, I, I don't want that to be, um, I don't want that to move. So when I drag my formula down, it will come with me. Um, so if I go here, it's still here. It, it stayed there. So that's a really important um, um, note to make in terms of putting your dollar signs around um, um, were within your formulas so that when you do drag them or copy them into different locations that you're actually, um, the cells that you want utilised in your formula are, are, are the correct ones. So it's, uh, look, it's, it's again, I find, I, I use this formula a lot and, and again, with anything using for the first time, you know, be patient with yourselves, know that things can go wrong and if you get lots of NAs, it, there may be a really simple fix, but um, we'll have this um, in the notes that, that so that people can can have a look at this later on. But it it is, I think it's a pretty powerful, um, a powerful tool. So in terms of then, let's look at formatting your data so that we can um, help you with, when you analyse it. Um, sometimes your headings uh, in terms of the sequence that they might be and if you want to add columns, um, how that might look. And in terms of the other thing that I will note is that if you are using your VLOOKUP, the, the, the whatever identification you're looking up has to be in the most left-hand column. Um, of the table that you're looking at. So um, again, I'll just, we'll quickly race back to this um, spreadsheet with the um, the, the uh, micron tests. So we've got our, our electronic tag in, in the, our, our left column, our column A, and also when we looked at our fleece weight data, our, our, our column, that our electronic tag is in is in the most left column that we're looking up, so that that's also really important. Um, okay, so let's have a quick look at. Where I did talk about conditional formatting, so we, we have had a look at that, um, and we have had a look at our filters again because I think this is a really important one and a way that you can really um, have a look at your information, and. Um, we've had a quick look at our pivot tables. So the other thing that I wanted to um, have a look at is, so this is some body weights, looking at some different body weights, and I'll finish up with this one so we've got some time potentially for some more questions. But let's just say these are some body weights that we've pulled together. You could actually put in, um, let's say, um, some growth, like to work out your growth rates. And in this particular example, let's look at the growth rates between um, the the, um, the 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 first two weights. So we've got our first two weights, and we've got the dates up the top. Um, they're also here um, in in our our heading. And this is actually where putting they don't necessarily have to be in order, but it is helpful. Uh, and when you do, um, say, for example, a pivot table, let's and um, if we go to insert again and we do our pivot table um, and we want to insert. So this is actually picked up the whole table, but I actually want it to pick up. So I'm actually holding my mouse left, the left side of my mouse down and I can drag that across and then I can go 
I I've taken my hand off the mouse and shift control and arrow down and it's actually taken me to the bottom of my um, data set and I hit OK. And what that does is it pops it into a separate um, separate sheet that you can then um, start having a look at. So we might, let's just go, or we want to have a look at um, what the averages are. So you could actually drag um, your um, the, the, the weights down or, or you can tick them um, and they can automatically come up in your spreadsheet. And what this is actually doing, it's actually summing them, but we don't want to do that. So if I right click here, I can actually go to, I want to average. So I can average, um, you can go count, you sum, average, minimum and maximum. Um, they're probably the main ones that you'd use. And I want to see how what our growth rates are going. We've got, say, these are weathers we're wanting to finish. Um, and we can very quickly by pulling. So I've um, the way that this information's come together is that we've got all these different weights. They could be sitting on an X, um, say, on one of your indicators that you um, potentially download, and it might give you the growth rates as well as you go. Or you might pull them together so you can actually, using that VLOOKUP that we had looked at before. So if I go back onto here, um, we don't need all of the zeros. So we go in and we can get rid of some of those. So automatically I can see that we've got 37.8, 44, 46, 52.3, and then there are only 52. What happened here? And you might start thinking, oh, yeah, well, that was actually when it got really wet. So this is actually the end of July, beginning of August. Um, and so you you go, yeah, well, that that actually makes sense because the, the weather was terrible and so they weren't doing as well. But that's um, so that gives us a very quick summary. If, for example, we want to start looking at what rather than the absolute values, we actually want to start looking at the growth rate. So if we put in growth rate and we want to have a look at, um, we want to look at the difference between um, uh, the, the weight on the 15th of June compared to the weight on the uh, 18th of May. And so actually I should have put a um, bracket in there. And a bracket there, and I want to divide that by the number of days. Instead of having to count how many days, I can actually use the dates in my formula. So if I open brackets, so I can actually go the date, my, so the 15th of the 6th minus the 18th of the 5th, and it'll actually calculate the number of days for me. Um, and I can hit enter. And so they, this actual animal was losing weight. And then it jumped up here. You can actually see it was 25 and then 42. I reckon that's a sampling error. So I'd actually question whether those weights were collect, captured um, correctly. And, and if it looks a bit noisy, I'd actually pull it out and then I'd start having a look at. Um, so this is where you can start going, well, that doesn't actually look realistic. So what that's telling me is that that animal was losing 267 grams a head a day which seems quite a lot, um, it probably wouldn't still be here if that was happening. So I think that's a bit, um, uh, you know, a bit noisy in and, and I'd actually um, disregard that, that and I'd probably start then looking at those. Um, you could actually then have a look at, well, what's the growth rate? You, and all you have to do is actually just move. You can, so all I did is um, right uh, sorry, I'm clicking down with my left side of my mouse and I'm pulling that across. And then um, uh, so that can um, be a really quick little way that you can um, move move you, um, your formulas around. Now, if I was to copy that down, remember what happened last time? It actually, um, So we need to make sure. So it's actually pulled down um, those, um, those cells. So we need to make sure that we've got our dollar values in here. So we want these to stay constant, our dates to stay constant, and the other figures are able to go down. So then our formula, when we drag it down, 
is actually looking at these two weights for this particular animal on those given dates. So that's a really quick way to find out, um, and then you can double click that and follow that down. So that gives you a really quick idea in terms of using growth rates, and then we pop go into data and our filter again, and we can actually start having a look for well, what some of our lowest weights. Here was one animal lost weight um, between when it started, um, but then it's gained again. So that, when we start talking about looking at growth rates, you may need to do more than two two weights, um, depending again on what you might be want might be interested in. But that's a nice quick little way that you can actually start having a look at um, growth rates. You can quickly see what the range is. Um, so we've got you know one's losing weight, but whether that's a um, or right up to, we've got some animals doing 465 um, grams a head a day. Um, so okay, again, Sally. we can sort on large. Sure. Sorry to interrupt. Um, just got a question. Could you put the formula in so that they can see which cells they apply to? This particular one? Yeah. yeah. Yep. So I've just gone... Um, D, so column, column D, I, I'm looking at the, the most re, uh, a, a recent weight and I'm taking away um, an earlier weight. Um, so that is, um, you know, so 59.5 minus 39.5 to give us um, the, the, the weight gain over that period. And the same with the dates. So the dates are... Um, so this is the 30th of June and how many days in between the 30th of June and the 18th of um, May. So if I can check this if you want, and, and it's an easy way to check. So if we just go 59 minus 39, and that gives us, so it's 20 kilos, and then I want the date. So we want the 30th minus the 18th of the 5th, so I've got 43 days. So again, 20 divided by 43, and that gives us the 465. So if you're not sure if you've got the formula right, you could you could um, kind of break it down a little bit and make sure that you're getting the same answer in a couple of different ways. And um, yeah, so it's just kind of trying to speed it up a little bit, but I need to have the proper date here. Um, and I've, I know we're going just going to, oh, there's one other little thing with the pivot table I want to quickly show you um, is so before when we did it, um, if I didn't have the the date, the, the dates in here, I'd just have weights and it, it, I wouldn't know which one it was. So that's also depicting it. But if I go back to the pivot table and I want to add in that growth rate now, if I go up into pivot table, analyze, and if you go to change data source and I want to, so now it's taken me back to my data source and I want to make sure that I pick up this G, this, um, the, the G column. So if I click on um, the, the formula, it's a bit, sorry, it's a little bit hard to see. It's very hard to make it bigger. I'll have to learn that for next time. And I make that G and I hit enter um, and OK it's actually automatically added my growth rate to my pivot table and I can actually pop it into the data now. Again, it's the sum, right click, and I'm going to do the average. So my average growth rates for those, um, um, for that period of time that we looked at before was on average um, 194 grams per head per day. And you can start making um, some other, um, yeah, I guess, insights into that. So that's given you a really very quick overview of pivot tables. Um, we haven't gotten, got into graphs, I apologise. We'll do that next time. Um, but I think in terms of where where we'll go to next time is um, I'll, we'll do some graphs, but we'll also build on your data over time. So let's start, with, and this is where your graphs will come in, so looking at some trends. And then in terms of ranking animals, you know, there might be multiple things that you look at. 
um, and and how you might complement also your RAM selection with what you've been doing with your use or um, and we'll quickly touch on some of the um, yeah just it, you know do you need software and and it'll be kind of guided by you guys in terms of if you've got any other questions um, that we might be able to to add in um, as we go. Thanks, Sounds Charlotte. Good, Hard to fit it all in an hour. <laughs> it is, yeah. I have to talk quite fast. <laughs> um, probably stick around for a couple more minutes if if anyone's got any questions that they want to put in the chat. Um, that V lookup formula is quite handy, Sally. So yes. Me. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can use it for sporting clubs and stuff like that. So you could look up a name. You don't have to look up an electronic tag. So you can use it, you know, think of all the other you know, committees and things that you might be on that you might use a Excel um, spreadsheet that you might use it for. <laughs> yeah, just not not just for sheep and goats here. <laughs> no, that's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very good. Um, I'll just give another minute or so if anyone to write out any more questions. Um, and just, yeah, just a reminder that, that the next one is coming up um, in two weeks' time as well on the 22nd of July. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, oh yeah, you got that up there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Very good. Well, I think that's all from everyone on um, online at the moment. Oh, I've got one from Pamela. Um, is it possible to do ranking and weighting, weighing yourself in Excel? Uh, yeah, you, yes, you can. And probably the couple of ways uh, that you might be able to do that might be so i've just jumped back into that spreadsheet that we had with the um the micron testing so let's say for example um you could uh just using your sorting you could potentially rank uh, but this will be hard cutoffs too so this is where you've just got to be a little bit mindful um, so I could actually say you could use number filters. So I could actually say I want everything less than, I don't know, let's just say 16 micron. Um, and, well, let's do it. Um, so let's go I want everything less than, and if I go 16, um, it will give me, so now I will only... Oh no, it's all of them there. But if I in in this spreadsheet, it's cut everything, so it's reduced my list, and it's only given me all the animals that are sixteen microns or less. Um, and let's just say I want to, um, and if you if you wanted to to um, you know have fleece weight, for example, and you wanted it um, above um, but greater than I don't know one point four. Um, and so now I've only got animals that are under 16 microns and cutting me above 1.4 kilos. Um, so I'm not sure if that's um, helpful, Pamela, and answers your question. But these are hard cutoffs. So you might have an animal that might be 16.1 and, you know, and still fit the criteria. So you, it, you've just got to be careful and know that it's their hard cutoffs rather than, um, you know, giving you a, a little bit of room to move. Good. Um, okay, I've got nothing else in the chat there. I think we'll um, finish it up there. Um, and yeah, looking forward to two weeks time. Yeah, I guess the other thing, Charlotte, might be worth just saying is that we will have some um, smaller videos that we're we're in the process of doing that will be specific to um, a, a few of these um, items that that'll be a bit shorter, shorter, sharp, um, and to the point that people will be able to access as well uh, in a in a few weeks of time as well. Yeah, yeah, that'd be really good. Yeah, we'll be sending those out pretty soon. I think. Yeah, that'd be good. Oh, well, thanks everyone for, for joining. Appreciate the support and hope you got something out of it. Awesome. Thanks so much, Sally. See you next time. Thanks all. Thank you.